in eastern Montgomery County, 13 miles from the heart of Philadelphia, lies the small but bustling community of Willow Grove. In the middle of town stands one of the largest and most modern shopping malls in Pennsylvania. Signs at the entrances all proclaim Willow Grove Park. Not Willow Grove Park Mall, simply Willow Grove Park. Inside, decorations throughout the mall reflect a single theme, and shoppers are surrounded by relics and other reminders of an old amusement park. For here once stood one of the best loved places in all of eastern Pennsylvania. For you see, as anyone old enough to remember will tell you with a wistful smile, long before there was Willow Grove Park, there was Willow Grove Park. Out there where life is a lot, you best feel a Grove Park. Left Park, feel a defiant, be happy and gay. Take my hand, you'll understand. May I show you around? The story of Willow Grove Park begins a century ago. By the 1890s, streetcars and trolley lines were by far the most common means of public transportation in major cities throughout the country. And Philadelphia was no exception. But few people rode trolleys on weekends. So transit companies across the country were seeking ways to increase weekend business. A common solution was to buy or build an amusement park out of town and run a trolley line to it. The Union Traction Company, forerunner of the Philadelphia Rapid Transit Company, decided to try just that. Finding a suitable location was easy. Willow Grove was a natural choice. For over 50 years, the town had been a popular resort area for the wealthy who came every summer seeking renewed health and vigor from the natural mineral springs in the area. So the traction company acquired about 130 acres of land along what is now Easton Road and between Moreland and Welsh Roads. The company added a half a million dollars and Willow Grove Park was born. Laid out by Peter Widener and William Elkins, the park was built under the direction of John B. Parsons, the president of the Union Traction Company. Willow Grove Park opened on May 30th, 1896. Eager to escape the summer heat of the city, crowds flocked to the park by the thousands. The park was so successful that the traction company added a number of new trolley cars just to handle the park traffic. A 10-acre man-made lake was the park's main attraction in those first few years. Visitors could stroll around the beautiful grounds or take a boat ride in the electric launch. A spectacular $100,000 fountain was a breathtaking sight and was a park landmark for many years. Young couples wishing to be alone for a while could rent rowboats. Out on the lake, they could admire the beautiful fountain or simply each other. It was all very prim and proper, of course, and very much in plain view of nervous chaperones watching from the lakeside pavilion. By the end of its first season, nearly five million people had come to Willow Grove Park. Over the next several years, three new trolley lines and hundreds of new open-air summer cars were added to handle the ever-growing crowds that flocked to the park each season. 
Despite the huge crowds, the park rarely seemed crowded. With 130 acres to spread out in, there was plenty of room to move about. Most of the park's rides, concessions, and attractions were concentrated in one area of the park, with the rest of the land reserved for wooded picnic groves, and paths, and flower gardens. Three of these groves, located north of the lake, could accommodate over 25,000 people, all without crowding. The park's first roller coaster, the Scenic Railway, was built near the picnic areas. Sometimes known as the Little Scenic or Nickel Scenic, this gentle beginner's coaster was both the park's first ride and one of its last. The Little Scenic would survive until the park closed. Few other rides were ever built near the picnic groves. For most of its history, Willow Grove Park would remain very much a park. Other popular attractions in the early years included a water ride called Shoot the Shoots. Considered almost shockingly dangerous in its day, Willow Grove's ride worked very much like the similar ride at New York's Coney Island. Passengers went flying down a steep ramp to plunge dangerously into a frightening pool of water that was every bit of four foot deep. Tours of the World was an attraction much like today's simulator rides. Patrons sat in railway cars which rocked back and forth while movies shot from real locomotives were projected on a screen at the front of the car. The park superintendent both lived and worked in this beautiful stone administration building. The park's builders had a deep love for music. And in the years to come, Willow Grove Park would gain a well-earned national reputation for its outstanding concerts. The concerts were free and featured many of the finest bands and orchestras of the day. Concerts were performed in the Music Pavilion, which could hold 10,000 people. The band shell in the pavilion was considered acoustically perfect. Crowds flocked to the park to hear concerts by popular bands such as the Ithaca Band, directed by Patrick Conway, and the New York Symphony Orchestra, under the direction of Walter Damros. As park attendance grew each year, new attractions and rides were added regularly. Some of the rides would last only a few seasons, while others would remain for generations. Before 1910, the most famous and visible landmark of Willow Grove Park towered above the treetops. For nearly 70 years, the enormous artificial mountain of wood, painted burlap, and later concrete would dominate the skyline of Willow Grove. The Mountain Scenic Railway would remain one of the park's most popular attractions to the end of its days, and is remembered by millions today as the Alps. As the coaster train climbed toward the mountain, passengers were treated to a breathtaking panoramic view of the park and surrounding town. After a thrilling ride through the mountain, the train then glides into the scenic palace and slowly winds its course along dimly lighted tunnels and past brilliantly lighted grottos of spectacular scenery. Near the mountain rose another park landmark, with the rather blunt and awkward name of the Captive Flying Machine. It would be known to later generations simply as the Airship Ride, and finally as the Rocket Ships. Passengers originally rode in open gondolas. These were later replaced with biplanes, and finally by the rockets that most people remember today. The coal mine was an unusual roller coaster, popular in the early years. Designed to resemble an actual coal mine, passengers rode in cars very much like those used in real coal mines. 
The mechanical coal miners working away inside were so realistic that sometimes people thought they were live actors. Next to the coal mine stood the Willowgraph Theater, where one could go and see some of those newfangled moving pictures. Venice was an attraction considered a marvel of its time. Passengers took a boat ride on the winding canals of Venice, Italy, past beautiful flower gardens and stately old world buildings. Many considered the illusion almost as good as actually going there. It certainly was more convenient. The automobile race was one of the attractions that didn't last too long. Four full-sized cars raced each other around an oval track. Wooden rails prevented the cars from hitting each other. And riders could achieve the breathtaking speed of 25 miles an hour. But as real cars became more common, the ride quickly lost its charm. Real cars were much more fun. They went much faster. And you didn't have those silly rails to prevent you from hitting the other cars. The automobile race was gone by 1910. Replaced by the park's first dancing pavilion and a fun house called the Crazy Village. Of course, no park would be complete without a carousel and Willow Grove would have several over the years. The park's first lasted only about 10 years and was replaced in 1906 by this magnificent carousel. It was designed and built by the nearby Philadelphia Toboggan Company, one of the most famous names in amusement park history. Like all of the company's rides, the carousel at Willow Grove was as much a work of art as it was a ride. The company was also famous for its roller coasters and built the forest ride coaster at Willow Grove in 1919. Located in a wooded area near the Lakeside Cafe, this coaster is largely forgotten today. Another Philadelphia Toboggan Company carousel was added in 1922. The company remains very much in business today in nearby Lansdale. A busy day at Willow Grove Park meant plenty of hungry people, and the park offered enough variety to suit every taste and pocketbook. For those who didn't feel like bringing a picnic lunch, anything from a light snack to a full course dinner could be found within the park. There were two complete restaurants. The Lakeside Cafe, a fashionable place where the affluent could dine quietly by the lake. And the Casino, where diners could hear the concerts drifting over from the nearby music pavilion. Centrally located in the park, and very much in keeping with the attitudes of the day, was the women's building. This was a full-service comfort facility for the ladies, complete with lounges, necessary rooms, and courteous female attendants. Facilities for the men were much simpler and considerably less elegant. In the years before World War I, Willow Grove Park reached its peak. Considered by many to be the most beautiful amusement park in America, crowds numbering in the millions came through the park each season. As they had been almost from the beginning, the biggest attractions were the concerts. The park built itself as the music capital of the world and crowds of up to 30,000 a day would flock to the park for concerts by the Victor Herbert Orchestra and many others. But the biggest crowds came to hear one band above all others and its conductor, whose name would be forever linked to Willow Grove Park, John Philip Sousa and his band. Except for 1911, when the band was on a world tour, 
Sousa performed at Willow Grove Park every year from 1901 through 1926. Two concerts a day were held, one in the afternoon and the other in the evening, with one-hour intermissions between. Many was the warm summer evening in those golden years, when the sounds of Sousa marches were as much a part of Willow Grove Park as the roar of the roller coaster. During evening intermission, when the western clouds glowed bright pink from the setting sun, and here and there the first stars were beginning to shine in the twilight sky. Crowds would stroll down to the lake to watch the marvelous fountain where the water sparkled in the ever-shifting, beautiful colored lights. The night seemed magic somehow, more like something out of an Arabian Nights fantasy than simply an amusement park. And almost always, if the Zuzu band was performing, before the concert was over, the sounds of his most famous composition would come drifting from the music provision. The Stars and Stripes Forever. And finally, every Saturday night, the day would end with a spectacular fireworks display. <laughs> Throughout the park's heyday, many special events regularly grew crowds to the park. Thousands came for the Firemen's Carnival. There would be the Firemen's Parade. Then everyone would gather around the lake to watch the firefighting contest staged by the various fire departments. The years 1911 through 1915 marked the 50th anniversary of the Civil War. A popular event at Willow Grove was Grand Army Day, honoring the Union Army. Tents were pitched by the lake and reenactors demonstrated army life in the 1860s. And no doubt, here and there in the crowd, a white-haired, grizzled old veteran was quietly laughing to himself and thinking, no, it wasn't that way at all. The Roaring Twenties was a golden age for America's amusement parks. Willow Grove Park did well in the early twenties. But as the years passed, it became a time of transition and tragedy. As roads improved and more and more people could afford cars, parking lots were added as trolley ridership declined. Trolley lines were fast becoming obsolete and park attendance began to decline as people found other places to go in their new cars. As attendance dwindled, fewer new rides were added. And even the once famous concerts could no longer draw the crowds that they once did. A new generation was coming of age, and their taste in music was changing. Even a new giant twin roller coaster called the Chase Through the Clouds failed to attract much new business. And visitors in the mid-twenties saw a park that was beginning to rapidly fall behind the times. There was still plenty to do at the park. Laugh at yourself in the mirror maze. Try your luck at the shooting gallery. Or have your picture taken and made into a postcard. But for growing numbers of people, it was all something they had seen and done before. The Sousa Band gave its last performance at Willow Grove Park in 1926. The park would survive and even have a renaissance of sorts in the 1950s and early 60s, but the golden age was gone forever. In the mid-twenties, the Philadelphia Rapid Transit Company decided it was time to get out of the amusement park business. In 1926, the transit company leased the park to Meyer Davis, 
whose successful orchestra interest had spawned an amusement park company. The transition was complicated by several tragedies which occurred in the late 20s. On the park's newest roller coaster, The Chase Through the Clouds, several people were killed and a number of others injured when one of the trains jumped the tracks. The coaster was never used again. Another tragedy was a fire that destroyed the old coal mine ride. Again, several people were killed. The fire left a vivid impression on a young college student working that summer at the park. And years later, James Michener would retell the story of the tragedy in his first novel, The Fires of Spring. A couple of years after the coal mine tragedy, another fire destroyed the once popular Venice attraction. Despite these setbacks, the new management plunged ahead with a series of sweeping changes and renovations. The plans were to bring the crowds back to the park and to make the park more appealing to a younger crowd. Some rides, like the airship ride, were modernized as the gondolas were replaced with biplanes. The park's last great roller coaster, the Thunderbolt, was built on the site of the old coal mine ride. A new musical policy put an end to the free concerts of the past. They were replaced by a variety of different musical programs called music festivals, for which a separate admission was charged. Now and then, a few of the more traditional concerts were still performed, such as the Paul Whiteman Orchestra. The old casino restaurant was converted into a new dance land, and the older dance land became a roller skating rink. The chase to the clouds coaster was demolished, and an open-air amphitheater was built on the site. Although the coaster entrance was kept, as the amphitheater entrance. Here, free thrill acts such as vaudeville and circus type acts were performed. Some smaller rides and attractions were added, like the Heyday, and a fun house of sorts called Bluebeard's Palace, where visitors could trace the life of the notorious Bluebeard. Old rides which were still popular remained. The mountain scenic railway, of course, and the little miniature train pulled by a tiny but real steam locomotive. Like almost everything else in America, Willow Grove Park suffered in the Great Depression. But in some ways, the park was not affected as badly as many other businesses at the time. Already suffering from declining business, the Depression in many ways simply meant that belts had to be tightened just a little bit more than usual. In the early 30s, local radio stations began broadcasting special events from the old music pavilion. As much as possible, the park continued to remodel and renovate in the 30s. While there were no more major new rides, some smaller attractions and rides were added. Rides like the scooter boats, which used the waterways left over from the Venice attraction. The tumble bug. And the caterpillar. And the midget autos. All came in the 30s. Boating on the lake remained as popular as ever and the 30s saw a beautiful new addition to the park's fleet. Many people today can still remember the time when the elegant, graceful swan boat plied the waters of Willow Grove Park. The Depression was swept away by the outbreak of World War II. During the war years, amusement parks like Willow Grove played an important role by helping people escape for a time the pressing demands of a wartime economy. 
Because of the trolley line, gas rationing had little effect on the park. Although park attendance was good in the war years, wartime restrictions prevented the park from making any major changes. The 1940s was the heyday of the Big Band era, and Willow Grove Park's casino ballroom filled with the music of many of the finest big bands of the day. While the idea of separate kiddie lands and parks would not catch on until the post-war years, there were always lots of rides for the children. The pony track was located between the carousel and the mountain scenic railway. The economic boom that came in the post-war years marked the beginning of a brief renaissance era for Willow Grove Park. In the late 1940s and early 1950s, the park took on the form that most people remember today. The Mountain Scenic Railway was remodeled somewhat and became the Alps. And the biplanes on the airship ride were replaced with sleek stainless steel rockets. Yes, this was the Willow Grove Park as most of us remember it today. Would you like to go back for a while? Well, come on then, and we'll go back. Back to a time when we were all young and carefree, and all of our lives were yet before us. Back to a time when Willow Grove Park was still Philadelphia's favorite playground. That ever smiling clown with his drum meant that there was a world of fun and excitement waiting just inside the gates. Most people came by car now, but there was plenty of business to keep the buses and trolleys coming to Willow Grove. But however you got there, can you ever forget the excitement you felt waiting in line for your tickets at the entrance? Inside at last, and what a world of wonder and fun spread out before you. Can you remember how the sights and the sounds and the smells came at you from every direction? There was something interesting going on everywhere. If you were very young, then chances are you headed for Kitty Land. For the kiddies of all ages, there was, of course, the carousel. A tradition from the earliest days of amusement parks, carousels have always been popular. But there was so much else to do, 
that a day at Willow Grove Park wasn't complete until you had a chance to ride everything at least once. Remember the water scooter? Maybe the sailor here is remembering his own childhood when he rode these same boats. Or perhaps his parents told him of what used to be on this very spot. The old Venice. Do you remember the family cookouts in the picnic groves? There was space enough in the groves for 10,000 people. It was a time to relax and eat before heading back to the Midway. Or maybe just to eat and relax. But for most of you, just a quick lunch and then back to the ride. How many got your first kiss in the tunnel of love? And likely as not, your parents had done the same thing back when it was the old mill. Other rides had changed names too. Remember riding the turtle? It was once called the tumble bug. If your head was spinning from all the rides and you were wondering if you might be seeing your lunch again real soon, you could slow down the pace a little bit. Perhaps play a round of miniature golf, a park feature since the late 20s. Or if you wanted to get out of the sun for a while, you headed for the arcade. Remember playing skee-ball, trying to rack up points while not getting too distracted by the roar of the thunderbolt, which stood right next door. If you hadn't brought a picnic lunch, you could still find plenty to eat. Concession stands and a restaurant provided just about anything you could want to eat. And what would a day at the park be without popcorn, hot dogs, and of course, cotton candy? Regardless of what you like to eat, there was one building everyone visited sooner or later. And here was a real sign of how times had changed. The old woman's building 
now had facilities for men. Who could forget the funhouse? It was the old Bluebeard's Palace remodeled. Of course, the most popular attractions at any amusement park are the roller coasters. And the Thunderbolt and the Alps remained favorites until the park's last day. Through the 50s and 60s, parades and special events still drew crowds to the park. Special acts like acrobats and animal acts appeared regularly. And at night, Willow Grove Park still cast a magic spell. Long last, the magic day ended with fireworks set off near the lake. to take sleepy children home. For all the magic that still remained in Willow Grove Park, the golden years were gone forever. John Philip Sousa had served in the Navy in World War I, and in June of 1956, the U.S. Navy Band came to Willow Grove to say thank you with a final concert called A Tribute to Sousa. For a final time, the old music pavilion filled with the thrilling sounds of Sousa marches. 
For a little while, you could almost see the silent phantoms of men in straw hats and women in long, flowing dresses, listening quietly to the wonderful marches. As the concert ended, you could almost feel the phantoms strolling out on the midway to watch the stars coming out some warm summer evening half a century ago. The Navy band finished. The musicians packed their instruments and drove away. And then the workmen came with their crowbars, hammers, and bulldozers to wipe away a 60-year-old dream. The famous music pavilion was gone forever. In the late 50s, the park was purchased by the Hankin Brothers. The 1960s was a decade of turmoil and change in America. A new generation was coming of age, a generation that questioned everything old and established. Attendance at amusement parks across the country declined steadily, and many grand old parks that had lasted for generations went under. Willow Grove suffered greatly as attendance fell and expenses soared. The Hankins did what they could to keep the park going by adding some new attractions and charging a gate price. But the crowd still dwindled with each passing year. In the later years, the lakes were filled in to make room for parking lots and a huge bowling alley. By 1970, it was clear that the park simply could not go on as it was. In a last-ditch effort to revitalize the park, the Hankins leased it to National Service Industries, a company that specialized in Wild West-type theme parks. National Service Industries remodeled much of the park with a western flair, repainting many of the buildings brown and even building a frontier town. In 1970, Six Gun Territory opened to the public. Attendance the first year was good, but the novelty of the Wild West theme wore off, and the crowds quickly dwindled after that. The growth of the giant theme parks sealed the fate of Willow Grove. Crowds that once flocked to Willow Grove Park were now going to places like Hershey Park, King's Dominion, and Great Adventure. So, at long last, Willow Grove Park came to an end. At the end of the 1975 season, the gates swung shut, and a sign was hung up that bluntly stated the truth, closed. Over the next several years, the park rides were dismantled and sold. Paint peeled from rotting buildings, and weeds grew in the empty midway. Once the thunderbolt had roared with the happy screams of riders and the rumble of wood and metal, now the only sound to be heard was the wind drifting through the stark, rotting timbers. In the fall of 1980, all that remained of Willow Grove Park vanished from the earth.
today, a vast glittering monument to modern times rises on the site of Old Willow Grove Park. The mall is one of the largest and finest of its kind in the country. Very much to their credit, the owners of Willow Grove Park Mall have shown a profound and reverent respect for that which came before. In the center of the mall hangs a unique clock in honor of John Philip Sousa. Throughout the mall, shoppers are reminded that here once stood one of the best loved amusement parks in the eastern United States. And sometimes on a busy day, amidst the bustling crowd of shoppers, you may yet catch an old timer pausing to stare quietly at the old photos on the wall. When he turns away, you can see a faint smile on his face and a tear in his eye. Willow Grove Park is gone now, gone forever. But we honor its memory and the park lives on in those memories of youth and innocence. And the park will live on for as long as parents tell children about places they loved. Up there where life is a lark, you bet it's Villa Grove Park. Not far from Philadelphia, yeah. they're happy and gay. Take my hand, you'll understand. Well, I'll show you around. Take a ride on the thunder road. Hold on, you may get a joke. Then you hop aboard the Frontier Express. Then you rock it to the moon. There's nothing so relaxing as the old river boat. Nicest thing of all. Hey, hey, see the Mississippi, but hey, but you will agree. That life is a lark and feel the grow fire. That's where I want to be. Life is a lark and feel the grow fire. Here's a place for me.